in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the best way to, um, actually the most underrated way to utilize PA across or PA boot over in Madden 23. This concept, I don't see really hardly anybody running, but I think it's actually really, really, really good, especially in this year's game. And the reason why is because it's going to attack a space on the field that is very, very uh, open, if you will. Now, PAL cross or PA boot over this and bunch tight in. You won't need anything for this. This play will just work the way I show it to you in this video. Now, um, if you want to get my entire bunch tight end offensive ebook, uh, make sure to join the Patreon. The link is down in the description. Now, real quick here, I'm just going to throw the ball to get uh, Carmichael, hopefully get him out of the zone there. And what we have in pivot over is we have one route that is really, well, we have a lot of good routes, but there's one route that's really, really, really powerful, and it is this route to Carmichael. Now, um, I want to just kind of isolate this just for a second here. So what we're going to do is you know just again we're just going to zone these guys out and i want to show you why this route's so good so against man coverage and we're just going to clear everything out um what you're going to see is this deep post route has a ton of value against even inside shades so that was an inside shade you saw what he was able to do where that inside shade that kind of like dumb out animation that they get that's pretty consistent with this specific with this specific type of post route, okay? Um, because we're utilizing the PA boot over post, then it makes this really good because you'll see, again, inside shade, and you just roast him over the middle, okay? So we're gonna kind of build around this post. Now, another thing really quickly that I did wanna point out is I just wanna go over one little thing about spacing, field spacing, and then we'll get to uh, the post route. So, Let's say, for example, that your opponent is running, you know, something like this. This is kind of a, a double flat, double Mabel style coverage. Now, if you think about Madden, what does a double flat coverage cover? Well, it does a really decent job at stopping maybe something like this because they can use the tight end route. And then the double flat concept will oftentimes be able to play the corner route. Okay. Really, really good defense. Okay. But what it does, if you think about this, this is a basic principle. What does it take away? It takes away the sidelines. Okay. It takes away the sidelines. If you play match coverage, what does that take away? Well, especially against bunch sets, it's going to take away your sideline concepts. As you can see right here, I can't throw the ball to either sideline, especially if they have KOs. Now, the last coverage that I want to talk about is something that is actually growing in popularity a lot. We talked about it out of our dollar defensive ebook. Again, you get everything, all of our ebooks on Patreon for just $10. $10 will get you access to everything over there. Okay. Um, but what about this? So let's say, for example, actually, let me just go to this just because it gives us this proper alignment. But essentially, the coverage would look something like this. Okay, let me see this. Perfect. Okay. So essentially, this is a coverage defense. And then they have these cloud flats on the outside. So if you think about what are the cloud flats doing? Well, practically speaking, the cloud flats are defending the sideline area of the field. So again, if I try to run something like bench, um, you know, and then maybe, you know, let's say we did something like this, maybe we utilize a slant. They can use with the slant because they have the sidelines bracketed with zones. So where are they forcing you to throw the ball? They're forcing you to throw the ball into the middle of the field because that's where their user is, okay? The problem with that is a lot of users, a lot of players defensively, what they do, and you even see it in a defense like this, this is more of a dollar style, like dollar would be more, I mean, it would look a little different than this, but basically this is dollar, and then they have you know this guy here, and they have this guy here, right? This is pretty much dollar. Guess what this is forcing you to do? And this is also why bench is really good, but, but realistically, like typically what they're gonna do out of this, if I was running this defense, and I was running it against something like this, um, the thing that I would want to do uh, coverage wise is we would typically want to do something. And again, it depends a little bit on who you're using, but realistically, you know, maybe it looks something like, uh, like this. Okay. They roll the coverage to that side because that's going to take away the sidelines on the left and the sidelines on the right. And then you have the user in the middle of the field. So if I try to run something like this, it's really hard to throw this. You're going to have to throw maybe that corner out, and then you're going to have to ag it before it gets to the KO, which is a really high-level thing to do. So that's that's the basic idea. Almost every single defense in Madden, every single popular defense that you're going to face is going to try to force you to throw the ball into the middle of the field, and that's what we're going to do with this play, all right? So, um, and we're going to build around the post route. So the post route is in the middle of the field, of course. Um, so the setup 
is we're going to streak our slot receiver. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to clear out any zones so that we can then throw the post in the middle of the field. We're going to smart route the post, and then we are going to uh, slant Eric Berry, and we're going to in route Delaney Walker. Now, and then we're going to motion Berry across. Now, the beauty of this play is, and I'm going to break down the spacing on this in just a second. Um, but what you'll see is because of this post route out of pivot over, if you look at how deep that post route is, it really opens up the space on the field. This is what makes bunch tight in so good and specifically this play. Um, so what we have here is we're threatening across the middle field. So we have a quick underneath read in the middle field designed to take the user here. And then it leaves the user having to come back over here. Now the user, especially if they're a man, he doesn't want to play over here. So if they're a man, this is an easy read right here. But what makes this specific post route so good is most post routes um, are going to break about right here and they're going to be about right here. The problem with that is where you would throw the post and where you throw the slant, they would intersect. The beauty of this deep post route is now this, you're throwing this over here. You're throwing it over in here, and this guy is, is really underneath. So if you think about what we've just done, we've created essentially a triangle, okay? Here's the top point, but it's a very deep triangle. Here's the, the top, top point, here's the bottom point, and then here's that other point right there. So you see how what this does, and, and really if you look at where the routes actually are, they're all designed to be thrown in between the numbers. If you can throw in between the numbers with a high success rate, it really will take your offense to the next level because it's almost impossible to user it. Okay, it's almost impossible to use it. So uh, how would they stop this? Well, they'll probably have a, uh, a hard flat over here that'll take away the tight end in late. They're gonna have to use it early. So then they're gonna need a vertical hook over here or something. And then their user right here. So if you think about it, they're, they're, this, it's just really hard to stop to play, especially in man. So again, you're gonna let him set his feet. You're looking tight end. No, the user, no, there. And then I've got my post though. I got to freeform that a little differently, but you see the idea. Okay. Now I'll show you what'll happen. Let's say they put a zone there. So like in this example, we got a hard flat and we have a third um, in this, in this idea. And then we'll even throw a cloud out there. Okay. Pretty good coverage. So if they do all those adjustments, the streak is designed to pull the, any deep zone out of the way. So you'll see here the middle third, he has to worry about the streak and it leaves him open, you know, for a potential one play score. Now I want to take this to zone just real briefly. And I want to show you why this is also so good against zone. So we'll start with uh, cover four because I think cover four is the harder one. Most people, if they play cover four, they're going to shade underneath. Okay. Um, so what you'll see here against zone is the streak will clear out space. So you'll have here, whoops, I did not mean to get that animation. But basically, if you see zone, if the user stays underneath, which typically they will, uh, typically a user, because because typically they're going to use it underneath. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't, because if they don't, then um, your tight end's wide open, okay, or your slam. But like right here, throw it right there. You want to ag that. You have to ag catch that. And ideally you want to almost turn him around so that he catches the ball in the middle of the field. So what this causes is now they have to use that. Okay. They have to use that. It's really going to play more like a mid read, um, but they have to kind of come back into that space. And then what that allows is now your backside in and slant. You've got that quick. You got that tight end quick. If they come down on that tight end, even for a second, you can throw the post right every time. And the same is true of cover three. The same is true of cover three. Same exact thing. So uh, here's cover three. And again, your first read typically for me is going to be the user. He stays down. I'm throwing right there. Boom. Okay. So you see how that works? Really high level play um, for any zone, any man coverage. If they do play zone, um, like if they play like cover two, typically if you think about it, like I'm trying to think where you would want to throw. Cover two is honestly probably the best coverage because um, it has the most middle of the field protection. Um, but it also is susceptible to, you know, potentially a one play over there, one that open. Um but really with cover two, it's honestly, I'll show it to you again. 
I would look to the tight end because most people, when they play cover two, they're not going to have a three wreck on the field. Um, if they do have a three wreck, they're re- you know they really know what they're doing, um, especially for a concept like this. So if they do have a three wreck, like yeah, the three wreck will do a good job of lurking the tight end route, and then they can lurk the slant. Um, but you'll see right here, there's still that opening right in there late. Okay, so that and the problem is if they put all those zones out there, they're going to have to, like, for example, let's say here, you know, he comes down on the slant. Okay, if he comes down on the slant, there's going to be that same opening where you can throw this against cover two as well. So you'll see here, like, they let the tight end go, but they're going to come down the slant. You throw right in there, and again, you ag it, and the guy will, be, and you want to come back to the to the quarterback. So that's peeping over one of my favorite setups. The reason why is because it does such a good job of attacking um, this area on the field that most people don't want to attack. And then the other thing about this is you have this really big time post route that gives you a pretty good chance to beat man coverage over the top for a one play score. Guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to get my entire bunch tied in offensive ebook, head down to the description and go join the Patreon. $10 will get you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. So want to see you guys in the Patreon. Make sure you join today. Thanks for watching.